Let's do soil notes together from your soil diagram notes. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see better. So the first part about, the first part talks about the different components of soil. So let's go ahead and write up here that soil is composed of three main particles. And they are sand, silt, and clay. So sand is the largest particle. Silt is in between and clay is the smallest particle in terms of size. So the percentage of each of these determines the soil size, soil type. So how do farmers or gardeners determine the type of soil? How do we find out what the percentage of sand, silt, and clay in the soil is? Well, we can do a couple of different tests. So, you can do soil sieves, and that's where you put a sample of your soil and you shake it through the sieves and it separates them by particle size. And then you can weigh each amount of particle size divided by the total weight and you can get your percentage of sand, silt, and clay. You can also do it by feel. That's a lab um, that can be done or in a jar with water. And so you'll do the fuel method or in a jar with water. Then use this, the soil triangle, which is made by the US Department of Agriculture. And this is important to know. It's also called, sometimes called the texture of your soil. So the soil type or the soil texture um, because it determines how you're going to plow or till your soil, the type of plants that can grow best in it, how you're gonna irrigate it, and how you're gonna fertilize it. Now this one is the best, right here, loam. So I'm gonna put some stars here. So loam is a mixture of all three. So it has the best components of all three particle sizes is loam and it's the best type of soil. As we have more clay, we have slower drainage, or we call it permeability, and we'll talk about that more on another page. Okay, so slower drainage or permeability, the more clay we have, the more sand we have, it's more drainage. So faster drainage permeability, permeability. That's not an F, that's an R. I'm sorry, yeah, that's an M. P-E-R-M-E-A-B-I-T-L, 
ITY, permeability. And we'll talk about this again on the next couple of pages, but the more sand you have in your soil, the faster it drains. All right, so you can pause your video if you're not caught up, but we're gonna go on to the next page. So soil is formed through a couple of different methods and we have a couple of pictures on here for you. We have three main ways to form soil. So it's made from the weathering of rock. And there's three types of um, weathering, but first it's made from the weathering of rock. And it the rock is um, goes into different pieces. And that smaller pieces of rock form dirt, but then other things make it into soil. So rock into smaller pieces, plus the decomposition of living things. Okay, so the type of weathering we can have is we can have physical weathering. And by the picture here, you can see what that means. Weathering, and that's things like wind, rain, um, heating and cooling. So we call that thermal expansion and thermal contraction. Over time, it can crack the, the rocks or freezing. So if you've got a wet rock and it freezes, it can that water expands and it can crack the rock into smaller pieces. So that's physical weathering. And then we also can have chemical weathering. I wrote it over here, but you can write that over here because chemical weathering is um, it changes the makeup, the um, chemical makeup of the rock, the mineral makeup, excuse me. So it changes the mineral makeup of the rock. So an example of some chemical weathering would be acid rain. It dissolves some of the minerals in the rock and that dissolving of some of those pieces of the rock can uh, make small pieces that eventually create soil. So that's chemical weathering. So I'm gonna put over here, example is acid rain for chemical weathering. And then the last one here, I showed you some soil with some living things. And so the last one is biological weathering. And this is where you have the roots of plants that break up the rocks. Another way is when you have something called lichen, um, which is a living thing that can grow on rocks and it secretes chemicals to dissolve parts of the rocks. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna highlight my three types just to help me study a little bit better. So I have chemical weathering, I have physical weathering, and I have biological weathering of rocks. All right, so now let's talk about a couple of soil properties, some physical soil properties. We talked about permeability. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the water coming through here. So if we pour water, and if you have a blue colored pencil or a blue highlighter or something like that, that would work really well. So the watering can, the water is gonna go in and it's gonna fill up all the spaces in between soil particles. Now these particles are really big, but soil particles can be really small, like clay particles are really small, but they also clump together. 
So we're gonna fill all this in and then we're gonna make it drip through. So let's say our, our cup here has a hole in it and it's going to drip through, drip, drip, drip. Okay, so this is called permeability. All right, so permeability is the drainage rate of soil or drainage rate. So there's synonyms. All right, so, and this is how fast the water drains through. So it's the rate. Okay, so there's some issues here. If the permeability is too fast, <clears throat> the plants won't get enough water. It drains too fast before the plant roots can absorb it and it can leach out nutrients. So leaching is when you have nutrients like NPK and if the NPK end up coming out of the soil too quickly, we can call that leaching. Okay, so leaching is not all the water coming through, but when nutrients come through too fast, um, you can have leaching of the nutrients and plants won't get enough water. Okay, then um, what about too slow? <clears throat> um, what happens, water will rot the roots. So we call it root rot. So if your roots sit in that water, decomposers can move in and they can start to decompose the roots of the living plant. That is not something a living plant wants to happen. So once again, let's talk about our rates. Clay is the slowest <coughs> for permeability. And if you have a slowly draining um, sample of soil, you can add sand to increase permeability. This is something we've had to do <coughs> around Santa Clarita in most people's planters because we have a lot of clay soil. So people who know how to garden they'll add a little bit of sand into their soil to help the drainage rate. Okay, over here we have porosity. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of make these big boxes. These are two types of tests that are often on the AP test. These are two physical tests. They expect you to know what they mean the permeability and the porosity. <clears throat> okay, so now when our water goes in, and you notice there's no holes in the bottom of this cup, so there's holes in the bottom of this cup, but not this one. And so I'm just gonna draw the water all in between the particle sizes, and it's gonna fill up the cup, but not drain out. And we can measure how much that is with a graduated cylinder. So porosity is the amount of water the soil can hold. It's the pore space in between particles. It also determines how much space the roots have to grow in between soil particles. Okay, so those are a couple of reasons we wanna know the porosity 
Farmers, gardeners want to know porosity. They want to know how much water the soil can hold and also how much room the roots have to grow. All right, so those are the first two pages and we'll get to the second two pages on the next video.